Got a hot one, folks. Actually, it's a cold one. This is a 1984 Ford F800. It's a grain truck. It's got the 8.2 liter Detroit, the fuel pincher. He wanted me to change the oil and fix some small air leaks, pretty simple stuff. Then he hit me with the fateful words. Could you check out the blower motor? Apparently he's getting a little cold in the cab. I checked it out. It's an absolute hatchet job. I'm partway into the job. I just had to see what was going on. I figured I'd bring you guys along. The old girl's in pretty good shape. I would call that rust free, you know, by Illinois standards. Yeah, that's nothing. So steel box, it's got a wood floor, single screw with the tag axle, has a 10 speed transmission. I think I made a video about this truck once before. And then, like I said, that's the uh, fuel pincher Detroit. That's a four stroke V8. I don't know very much about these engines other than I don't think they have a very good reputation. That appears to be a reman tag there. It has a 1992 date, so I would say that's been replaced. So we got some splices and some tape and some chopped wires. Looks like a little critter has chomped through those wires. One, two, three of them. Probably a rat based on some other evidence I found. This wire here seems to provide power to the blower motor. It comes right off of the starter relay, goes through the firewall, makes a loop for some unknown reason, and then comes right back out to the blower motor. So that's not correct. None of this is, none of this is right. Yeah, probably the first step we should do is just chop these wires, put some power to that motor and see if it even works. Is there anything on this truck that we can trust as a ground? That's a ground, I think. It's bolted to the firewall. So I should be able to just jump power right to this rat-eaten section of the wire. That should juice up the uh, blower motor. All right, test lights hooked to power. So we do have a good ground there good enough anyway. Right, we'll just chop it. So if I go from here to here, we have power, but we have no blower motor action. Okie dokie, so we need a blower motor and we probably need a resistor. So I might as well order those. I just want to take bets on how many critters come jumping out of this thing. Probably zero. He tells me he's got a new cat that keeps the rodents at bay. I don't know, based on the number of chewed up wires and the very pungent aroma. I think the cat might not be doing its job. Tell you what, that's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, this thing is bad though. It's definitely seized up. So some critter probably made a nest in here and chewed up all these fins. So we need one of those. You haven't even seen the good part yet. We've got many problems in here. Check out this flashlight. It's made by Streamlight. It's called a switchblade, I believe. Can you believe a viewer sent that to me? 
thing's a beast. Plus it's a 95 CRI light, so it plays real nice with the camera. Uh, where do you want to start? Let's start over here. That thing there is the heater control. Got it pulled out of the dash. You cannot work on it in there at all. I determined that it had no power. It's supposed to have power anytime that the key is on. So that led me to the fuse box. I found that this 30 amp fuse here for the blower motor was missing. I reinstalled it, still no power. I flipped it around and I found that this wire was also missing. So I spliced that. You can see we've got lots of, lots of good stuff going on here. Typical cabin chassis. Plus this truck's been retrofit at least once before. Looks like the paint was originally orange. So it was probably either an IDOT truck, Illinois Department of Transportation, or it was an Asplund tree trimming truck. It's the only two I know that paint everything orange. Anyway, I'm assuming we now have power over here at the heater control, but I haven't actually checked that because I got, uh, I got distracted by this. So there's supposed to be a connector here for the blower motor speed switch. And somebody's been in here and chopped off the connector and wired up these individual connectors, which I did not know when I took this apart. And as soon as I pulled on it, they all unplugged from the switch. So I actually have no idea how those four wires are supposed to be connected to that plug. So that's what we have to figure out. I bought a replacement pigtail. Yeah, it's basically just a uh, process of elimination to figure out which one goes where. I have sort of a wiring diagram. Part of it I think is drawn incorrectly and it's also for an F350, but we should be able to figure it out. This is a new blower motor. This is a new resistor. For this demonstration, I have power hooked up directly to the positive side of the blower motor. And the negative side of the blower motor is hooked up to the resistor. All the control is done on the, the negative side. There's four speeds. In the highest speed, we essentially bypass the resistor and we just connect the ground right to the wire from the motor. That's high. And then to get the next lowest speed, we're gonna go through just a single resistor, which would be this one here. To go to the next lowest speed, we're gonna go through one, two resistors. And then to go to low, we go through all three. That's it, super simple. The more resistance there is in the resistor pack, the slower the motor spins. And that's essentially how they still work. They've gotten into digital control and pulse width modulation and lots of fancy stuff, but a lot of cars still use a basic blower motor resistor. So we just have to figure out how to get that nightmare of wiring on the truck to do what we just did here on the bench. Okay, now we have to finagle this thing in. And that one's stripped. Stripped. Don't worry, I found the threads. We just need to reinstall them. You may have noticed I bought a Dorman resistor against my better judgment. That's because I want to replace this connector. Uh, the connector itself is okay, but the wires are all chewed up. Some little rodents been after them. The parts store wanted $45 for that connector. I can buy the resistor and the connector together in a kit for less than I can buy this connector by itself. 
So somebody figure out the, the economics of that. So we're going to clip that one right there. Strip it back. Okay. And then on the new connector, we're going to cut it right about here. Strip it back. And they even come with these. It even comes with the fancy heat shrink connectors. So, crimp that guy together. other side. Go away, fly. Should go to the negative side of the motor. Brown is the negative. Strip that back. And we'll cut it maybe about there. Now the other connection we can make is the ground. So I don't know if this is original. I'm guessing, well, I don't know. There's a chance that it is. But again, it's been chewed on by a, a furry little friend. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna chop that part of it off. Maybe even a little more. Like so, Strip that back, put that off, and the kit comes with a new terminal. Okay, and that plugs into there. That plugs into there. So the last two wires, I'll just splice into the harness based on their position in that connector. I'll just use my multimeter. I think I've worked out which pins are which. So here's the switch here. In low, there should be nothing between any of the pins. And then I believe this one here is the ground input. And if I switch it to medium one, should have continuity to that pin. I do. If I switch to medium two, it's kind of interesting. Now I have continuity to that pin and to the pin next to it. So I'm not quite sure why they do it that way. And then if I go to high, now I have continuity between that second pin, again, and the last pin. So I think what we're going to do, because we've already got these terminals crimped on here, and we're just going to put it together the way I think it's supposed to go, and then we'll test it. And if it ends up being correct, then we'll crimp on the for real. Let's see, red goes here. We'll crimp on the for real connector. Orange has got to go here. And then blue with a red. Stripe. It's got to be somehow. Okay. 
Okay, now we hooked up this power cable. However, that might go like that. All right, with the heater control plugged in and the key on, we should have power here. Yes. So now I can just jump that wire to the positive side of the blower motor. And we should be able to test this guy. So theoretically, if I turn the key on, hey, we got a blower motor. Must be low. Medium one, medium two. Hold your breath. There's high. Cool. All right, here's our new connector. And it goes like that. We're actually not going to use this black wire, so I think I'll just go ahead and try to unpin that from the connector. There we go. Red is going to be black. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Watching some guy cut, strip, and crimp wires. I'm sure you're all just riveted. Plug that. Come on, baby. What's your problem? There we go. All right, does it still work? It's a lovely sound. <laughs> okay, low. Medium one. Medium two. High. Wow, I can't believe I did that without screwing it up. Somehow these two little baby rolls is all the electrical tape I could find. Seems to be an inventory problem around here. I did find some Twizzlers though, so that's good. I don't know. <laughs> this whole thing's pretty hokey. I guess it's good enough for an old grain truck. Now, the only problem I have is I'm missing the boot. There's supposed to be a rubber boot that goes from the motor down to that port there. I ordered one, like a universal one. Won't be here for a couple of days. so I guess we'll wait on that for now. Looks pretty good. Don't make it easy. I don't know what the for real, like for real service manual says to do here. Probably pull the whole dash out, I guess. 
Well, obviously somebody's been here before. Wrong screws, stripped out screws. The usual stuff. Most of this plastic from this era is one time use. Right, I think that works. Tabs are good. I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not staying where it's supposed to be. There, we'll tweak those a little bit, see if it helps. Now, will it stay on? Yes. Perfect. All right, I go on the goose chase for the last screw. No idea where it is. We're good. Where's that one go? Oh, get rid of that stupidity. I think we're done here. I still need that boot. Like I said, I ordered one, but it won't be here for a couple of days. They should be fine for now. It's pretty cool outside. Man, what is that? All right, the blower motor works still. Uh, which is good. That works. Oh, it must be a vacuum pump for the uh, heater controls. Nice and quiet. Come on. All right, but the radio doesn't seem to work. There's something I knocked loose down in the fuse box. I'll have to poke around down there. Oh, well, I think we're done with this thing. Nothing. All right, still no radio. I plugged some stuff in down at the fuse box. Nothing's labeled. I have no idea what it is. 
it obviously didn't fix the problem. So I think we'll just wait till Monday. I'll give him a call and see if the radio actually works because I didn't check it before we started this. And I've been down that path before. You now you spend a couple extra hours trying to diagnose something that you think you screwed up and then you find out that uh, it hasn't worked in five years and you wasted all that time. Anyway, hope you didn't waste your time watching this video. I know it's not uh, super exciting, but job's got to be done. Yeah, apparently there's some kind of rumor that Irish spring soap will keep away mice. It appears all it did was make a nice little snack for him. All right, guys, quick follow up. I had to get a vent tube from the junkyard. The universal vent tube from the parts store didn't fit, so I guess it's not universal. Also, I asked the customer if his radio worked, and he said, I have no idea. Probably not. Apparently, he's never even tried to use the radio the entire time he's owned that truck. So, so yeah, I'm pretty glad we didn't tumble down that rabbit hole. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.